kinematics example one a particle is moving in a straight line so that its position x meters at any time t seconds is given by the function x of t equals t cubed minus 6 times t squared where t is greater than or equal to 0. Part a find the average velocity of the particle from t equals 0 to t equals 4 seconds. So key thing here is we're looking for the average velocity and going up to our notes we know that the average velocity scrolling up average velocity is defined as s of t plus h minus s of t all divided by h so what we're going to say is that our v average is equal to and we'll go uh, it was x of t plus h take x of t all divided by h and we know in this instance that this is going to be our h and this is going to be our t so throwing all of these in we're going to get x of 4 minus x of 0 all over h and then we look at the definition of our function which is this guy here so then it becomes uh, 4 cubed minus 6 4 squared minus and we'll put all of those in brackets and that will be 0 cubed minus 6 0 squared and thankfully all of that second term becomes zero. So what we're going to get is, oops, H rather four. What we're going to find is that it's going to become four cubed is equal to, four fours are 16 and four times 60 is 64. Take, and that's uh, four squared is 16, 16 times six is, 96 and all of that divided by 4 and sending it over there we'll go the v average is equal to 64 minus 96 that's negative 32 i believe all divided by 4 and 32 divided by 4 will that should be equal to should be minus 8 and because we're working in uh where is it meters and seconds then it's going to come out to be meters per second so the average velocity in this case is simply minus eight meters per second all right going down find the velocity of the particle when t equals two seconds so remember that if we've got a function that tells us the displacement so the displacement here, then what we can do is we can derive a function that will tell us the velocity because remember the velocity itself is the first derivative of displacement. So by that definition, what we're going to find is that we can go V of T will be defined as and we'll go d d x of t over dt and then it will be d over dt and then we'll throw in our definition of x of t and our definition of x of t is t cubed t cubed minus 6t squared so notice a particular notation I've used here. So I've gone for Leibniz's notation and simply thrown that in front of the x of t. So all this is saying is we want to take the first derivative of x of t like so, which will give us x dash of t. Now taking the first derivative using the simple power rule, what we're going to get is 3t squared minus 6 times 2t to the power of 1. 
and that will simplify out to be 3t squared minus 12d. All right, now that we've got our function that tells us the, or describes the velocity, what we need to do is find that when t equals 2. So going over here, uh, v t equals 3t squared minus 12t when t equals 2. You don't have to write this, but it's always nice to be explicit about what we're doing. So I've been the 2 for t, and then 3, 2 squared minus 12, 2. And that will be 3 times 4 minus 12 times 2. Evaluate all the multiplications now. This will be 12, this will be 24, and then this will come out to be minus 12. So the velocity at t equals 2 seconds is going to be minus 12 meters per second. All right, now determine the time intervals for when the particle's velocity is positive and negative. So have a look at this. It's saying the particle's velocity. So when it says velocity, instantly that means we're going for the first derivative. So we're going for v of t equals 3t squared minus 12t. And it's asking when is it positive and when is it negative. So looking at this function here, firstly we've got a second order poly polynomial. So we're going to see anywhere between 0 and 2 roots. So what we need to do is we need to determine the time intervals when the particle's velocity is equal to 0. So what we're going to do is firstly we're going to factorize and then we're going to plot these on a sign diagram and we'll see when it is positive and when it's negative. So factorizing this we're going to go uh, we can take oh it's an easy one we can simply take out a t and that will give us 3t minus 12 and then we'll take out a 3 as well. So what we find is that for this when mm, we'll say when v of t equals 0 Therefore, t is equal to 0 and positive 4. All right, now going for our sine diagram. We'll go sine diagram of v of t. Drawing in this sine diagram, what we're going to have is something that will look a little bit like this, like so. And uh, our first root, well firstly, we don't go below 0 because t is greater than or equal to 0. I think it's, let's have a look. No, t is just, t is just um, between 0 and 4. Actually, t has to be greater than 0 because remember, we're working with time here, so we can't have a, a negative time interval. All right. So what we're going to do is our roots are at 0 and our second root is at 4. So our objective is we have to figure out whether the, the function itself, whether it's like positive, negative, or whether it's going to be positive, negative, or whether it's going to be something like positive, positive, something strange like that. So what we're going to do is we'll simply plot in values for, let's say, x of um, 4 x equals, not x, t equals 2, and we'll go t equals we'll go 5. And um, if we get a positive value for this guy, then we know that this will be positive, or if we get a negative, we'll know this is negative, and similarly for t. So putting this in my calculator, when t equals 2, what I'm going to find is that I actually get a v of t is equal to negative 12. So this is going to be negative here. And similarly for t equals 5, I find that v of t actually equals 15. So it becomes positive. 
So what we find is that for the, the negative interval, we're going to get the the velocity is negative when when zero is less than t is less than four and it's positive when t is greater than four all right now moving down find the acceleration function and hence determine the acceleration at t equals three so remember if um if v of t is equal to the first derivative of the function dis describing displacement x of t. So if v of t is equal to h x dash of t, then the acceleration function is going to be, go down an extra line, the acceleration function is actually equal to v dash of t, which is the same as writing x double dash of t black. So, so what we need to do is we need to find either the double derivative of x of t or the first derivative, or sorry, the, the first derivative of the first derivative of x of t. All right, so doing that, we know that v of t is defined as 3t squared minus 12t and therefore what we'll find is that a of t a of t is d over d t 3t squared minus 12t bringing that over there what we'll find is a of t is equal to 3 times 2t power of 1 minus 12 t to the power of 0 and summing all that up we get 6 t minus 12 so what we find is that our function describing the acceleration is equal to or is defined as 6 t minus 12 now looking at when a or when t equals 3 oh that's terrible when t equals 3, what we find is that a of 3 is 6, 3 minus 12, 6 times 3 is 18 minus 12, and therefore a of 3, or our acceleration at t equals 3, is going to be, that will be 6, and the units are going to be meters per second squared done so we'll leave it here for this video because i think um quite a lot of novel concepts have been discussed and then in the next video we'll have a closer look at this whole concept of displacement velocity and acceleration and how they're all linked together